Hi everyone. Today, excitingly, a package arrived. Inside was this tiny thing. It's the FreeSky XM Plus. And just to put it in perspective about how small it is, here is your regular uh, X4R, which is using your, your normal sort of race type quad. And look at that for a size comparison. Uh, this is crazy small and crazy light. However, the one problem with it for me at the moment is this little sticker that says EU LBT. Um, it was out of stock on Banggood for ages and ages, so I thought, oh, I know, I'll just order it from the UK and I'll see if I can flash the firmware. Now, flashing the firmware on these things was easy using the smart port, and you just had to swap one of the servo connectors over and plug it into your Tyrannus or the little cable that came with it. Uh, this thing looked quite so obvious, it hasn't got a smart port. It's got, as it says on the back here, uh, S-Bus 5 volt and ground connections here. But I think you can use them to flash it. So I couldn't find out much information about it, so I'm gonna try and flash it and see what happens. And uh, if it works, then consider this a guide to how to flash one of these. Let's get going. So first thing to do is obviously get the firmware, which it comes as no surprise that you go to the FreeSky site to get it. Just go to the download links as you might expect and helpfully enough the firmware is sat there on the first page. Uh, and you'll see it's got four versions of the firmware, single download link, so let's go ahead and grab that. Once we unzip this, we'll see that there are the four versions of the firmware there, the EU and the non-EU, and the ones that say RSSI means that it actually sends the RSSI signal on channel 16. So if you've got a flight controller that can read that information and display it for you, then that's the sort of place you'd use that. So for the benefit of anybody new that hasn't done this before, the way you connect up a Tyrannus so you can access the memory card is hold the two uh, trim buttons in and turn it on to get the bootloader mode. And at that point, if you connect up, it'll appear as a mass storage device on your computer. Now I'm using Mac and interestingly when I plug the Tyrannus in with mass storage mode I actually get two devices. One is Tyrannus and has these dot bin files in with presumably the EEPROM and the firmware. The other one which comes up as unnamed has all the regular stuff like my model memories and the sounds and the logs and everything. So what I've actually done is create my own directory called firmware and inside there I've already got my old X 4R firmware, which I've updated the firmware on before. So I'd suggest you made your own folder there just for ease of use. And I'm going to move the two non EU versions across just in case I want to use the one with the RSSI. And because it's just the number, what I'll just do for my own personal uh, ease of use is rename them so I actually know what firmware this is for. I suppose it might be quite handy to keep the file name as a, a sort of version, but uh, it, it seems very rare once I've got the right firmware on there that I actually ever need to go and update it anyway. So let's eject that drive and get flashing. What I've done is I've soldered on an old servo lead to here and you can see the signal power ground. This is an enormous servo extension, uh, but I'm going to cut this off anyway later on. But for now, what we need to do is reverse the ground and the power lead before we plug it into Tyrannus. And this is easily done. It, it, I've done this just in case uh, a beginner has not done this before. Just slip a scalpel underneath the little flap and pull. It's pretty easy to do, but very hard if you're trying to watch yourself do it in a camera um, display. Hence my fingers not quite being in the right place because I couldn't see them properly. Anyway, that's nice and easy to reverse. Now you can grab your Tyrannus, take the module cover off, and what you're doing is plugging in the bottom three pins with the signal on the bottom pin. Now this is very bad light here, so you can't actually see where I'm plugging it in, but that's a little bit better. Hopefully you can see the two blank pins on the top. Once you've got that plugged in, turn it on. And what you're doing is pressing the menu button, paging down, 
and going to your firmware folder and selecting the firmware you want a long press and then saying flash external device now this takes about uh, a minute so I'll speed up through this so you won't have to watch the boringness but basically if you've got some nice flashing lights on the receiver everything's working well okay that's flash so here's the binding if you power it on and it's unbound you'll see this red flashing LED so normal thing put your Tyrannus in bind mode hold the tiny little bind button on the XM plus and then give it power see the green and the red LEDs flash and you can let go of the bind button take it out of bind mode recycle the power and you should find that you eventually get a solid green light that indicates the receiver is bound at this point you can now get on plug it into a model and go build something more exciting so there's two reasons I wouldn't immediately go and say hey what are you still using these DR no. What are you still using these X4Rs for? Why don't you go and get these tiny ones? The first thing is, I haven't flown it yet. Now, the XM Plus should be a full range receiver, which should give the same range as these. One and a half plus kilometers. Whereas the, the normal XM, I think, is rated about 600 meters. Although I would guess you'd flash it in the same way. The other small caveat to know about these things is they don't do telemetry. Now, this might not be a, a, a big deal, but I find telemetry kind of useful if my quad goes down somewhere. I pop my RSSI on and I can wander around the field and say, oh, it's getting stronger over here. This is where my quad is. So just bear that one in mind. But, I mean, look look at the amount of space this will take in comparison. Uh, now, this is going to go on this QX80 frame I've just ripped apart. And I had previously a depinned version of the X4R. But even that... Uh, it's huge in comparison to this thing and although it weighs a few grams this weighs less uh, and on these sort of things that weight is absolutely crucial but yeah it might be going in bigger quads as well because it's just so easy to fit in of course the other thing I should mention is that I'm on the non-EU Tyrannus the original um, international firmware so I'm going to be getting rid of the LBT and, and flashing with international. Conversely, if you are on an EU Tyrannis and these happen to be cheap and in stock at some place like Banggood, then just buy those and flash the LBT version on them. Receivers are a bit of a funny thing. They tend to be, they can be cheaper locally than getting them from the, the sort of big Chinese warehouses, but it kind of goes up and down. So check your prices, get what's cheapest because flashing them is fairly trivial when we look at it like that. Anyway, I hope that's helpful and good luck flashing all your receivers and I hope they work well. See you next one. Bye.